everything happens for a reason. And I think almost everybody that um, has Indian blood will reiterate that, is that everything happens for a reason. As painful and as hurtful as some of the experiences can be, there's something to be taken from that. And even if it just means you're stronger and you're wiser and you won't make the same mistakes, um, they're certainly worth living through. They're certainly worth getting through and learning from. We still practice our culture. We still practice our language. We still practice our religion, our values that we have as natives. We get together on at least a monthly basis to do so. However, now it's not, it's, it's more of a choice. We need to make an active choice that we are going to keep up the things we find important about our culture, our, our ethical values, our, our one commandment of respect. We make sure that that's something that's practiced on a daily basis. But it's more of a choice now. We could very easily, if you look at my skin, I'm not very native looking in the, in the sense of the word. I have definitely more of the physical traits of my Swedish blood. So I could very easily go off and work in, my, in the world and have my family and no one would ever know I was Indian. I could get away with that. But it is an active choice on my part to keep researching my background and researching my relatives and learning more about my culture and my traditions and taking value out of those things that I really find important. And as I get older, I find myself delving more and more and in, in following the red road much more than the white road. I think you'll find it's a common theme along, among a lot of different natives that start to explore the red road, even though a lot of them have brought up on the white way of life. The red road offers so much more spiritual fulfillment in so many different senses. Um, when you're brought up in the white world, there's definitely different priorities that you're taught. Of course, we're taught to, you know, get a, you know, grow up and get educated and get a job. And a lot of times, it seems like it's about who has the most toys, um, buying the biggest houses, having the most cars. Um, you know, those types of things, those material things. And I think the more you explore the red road, the more you realize it's the simplicity of life that's really what life is all about. I live in a very humble home. I have used cars. My daughter's 14 years old and I haven't worked full time since she's been born. Because I think what's important is my number one job, which is growing that human being, growing that human life having her grow up to be a very productive, happy person. So that's my first priority in life. It's not about working full time and having the biggest house and having the most cars. And I think that's what the red road teaches. You go down that road and you realize that it's the bigger lessons in life. Those lessons about having peace within yourself, about relationships with others. One really has to be ready. Um, spiritually to follow the red road because it means it's, it's about resetting your priorities about what's really important in life. You have to be willing to you know live a simpler life and, and I'm not just talking in terms of finances. Um, you can't be wrapped up in uh, even a lot of emotional stuff. You can't be wrapped up in the lesser things in life. You can't let that drag you down. It's about a, a mindset as well and so I think one has to be a little bit older, maybe, or maybe it could be younger, depending on if you're an old soul or not. Um, but I tend to think as you get older, that's why our, our elders are so highly revered in our, our particular culture, is because they, they have this, this wisdom. They know this. Um, they know that the big things in life are really things that aren't stressed necessarily in today's American society. Um, so. Everyone, I think, that has, you know, has native blood, and even people that don't have native blood, find out what's, uh, why they like to kind of hang around with natives. Some of our people that are part of our community, they are drawn to that. They're drawn to the spirituality of it all. They're drawn to the, um, the closeness, uh, the formation of relationships with uh, the other human beings. Um, our American society is definitely more one that's centered on, you know, the present or the future, you know, whereas I think the Native American society definitely stresses the past and the elders and what they have to teach us. 
and we try to learn from past mistakes or things we did right in the past and learn from that. So learning about our history and what our forefathers can teach us, what our ancestors can teach us is um, of utmost importance to us. Certainly because of what has happened in the past and the experiences that Native Americans, that Indians have endured over time, it is certainly their strength and their wisdom that has caused them to find this balance with assimilation, you know, assimilate into society as much as we need to, but yet maintaining the rich values and ethics and culture that our, that our um, ancestors have taught us. an ongoing battle with, uh, with the criteria, as I said to Washington, because we did live then, we live now, and you know we'll persevere whether or not the feds say we are or not. I've been Indian all my life. I was taught to be Indian, and I'm going to be Indian until the time I die. My name is Wanigan. It means beautiful or, beautiful or welcomed one. I am Nipmuc Indian. I am the great-granddaughter of Chief Wise Owl. I exist. My name is Kaylee. My Nipmunk name is Blue Star. I am Nipmunk, and I exist. My name is Carmel. I'm five years old. I exist. <laughs>